How many points do you need to stay in the Premier League? Estimates vary, but the average of past season suggests 47 will be just enough to survive this time. So Crystal Palace have about 13 more points to find from their last 10 games. The informee and Dowie is suspended today. He will be back for the Cup semi next weekend. 19-year-old Bruce Dyer is given his chance alongside Chris Armstrong. And Ray Houghton appears for the first time since his deadline day move from Aston Villa. He's free to face Manchester United in the semi-final too. Six more points from their remaining eight games will lift Manchester City up to that 47 mark. They're without Irish internationals Niall Quinn through injury and Terry Phelan through suspension. Brian Horton opts for a five-man defence. His very last line of defence today, his substitute goalkeeper, is John Burridge, 43 years young and a part of that exciting young Palace team of the late 70s managed by Terry Venables. Terry Holbrook is the man in charge of the first of two survival games sandwiched in between Crystal Palace's FA Cup quarter and semi-finals. Manchester City today, Aston Villa here Tuesday. Two of the teams that Palace are hoping to pick off on a climb to safety. It's dog eat dog now. These are the games that make and break. Peter Beagree for Manchester City. Paul Walsh. It's quite a blustery but bright afternoon in South London. This is Alan Kernahan. Cut out by Chris Coleman. Manchester City lay sixth in the Premiership table at the start of December. Here's John Foster. Four months on and just two league wins on, they find themselves amongst the cast of thousands dodging the bullets in the relegation battle. Firm challenge by Alan Kernan, just letting Chris Armstrong know he's around. There's Vonk. Pitcher. Now Patterson. Headed by Vonk. Pitcher under pressure from Flickcroft. And it's Flickcroft who's been penalised. Space here for Dyer and Manchester City lost him all together. Just beyond Solarco and Kernahan heads over his own crossbar. Well, they've got the wires crossed there. Three centre halves. And there's the centre forward, and he didn't have anybody anywhere near him. And this time they've got a free kick to relieve the pressure. Russell in pursuit, Patterson and Shaw rather lost the thread there. Comfortable for Coleman. Coleman looking to release Armstrong. Well, that was a rather agricultural challenge by Michel Vaughan. Free kick quickly taken, Houghton, punched away by Coton, headed by Brightwell and then by Galdino, and Manchester City have got away with it. But Houghton was in the wide awake club then. Solarco. Towards Armstrong, Dyer came off curl and went for a corner. Anxious times in front of Tony Coton. Eric Young is arriving on the scene to join fellow defender Chris Coleman inside the Manchester City box. It's Solarco's corner. It's Southgate's header and Armstrong straight to Coton. A foot either side of the Manchester City goalkeeper and Chris Armstrong would surely have scored. It fell perfectly for him, but it fell perfectly for Coton too. 
And it was more difficult to miss Curtin really than hit him. Walsh away from Coleman. Gaudino has made a run ahead of him. Rustler is there too. This is Gaudino. Oh, and it needed a smart save from Martin. First time the Crystal Palace goalkeeper's really been troubled or even threatened. But Maurizio Gaudino, from some good approach work by Paul Walsh, found a, a low shot which was creeping inside the post. And the ball coming back at the Manchester City defence almost as quickly as it's leaving them. Gaudino. He's won the throw. Dyer. Nice idea. On to Armstrong. Stolen a yard here on Kernaghan. This is Chris Armstrong. Oh, he smuggled it in. Chris Armstrong gives Crystal Palace the lead. Four goals in four games since his return from the drugs ban. And a smile on the face of a young man who's had a troubled year. It's no more than Crystal Palace have deserved, and no surprise that it's come from the sheer pace of one of their front men, although he caught Tony Coton out on his near post. This is Chris Armstrong's 30th league game of the season, and that is his fourth league goal. And he doesn't need Alan Smith to tell him that that is not enough. Pitcher. Salako. It's a good cross two towards Dyer. Solid defending. Salako's throw. Coton has come to claim it. His punch as far as pitcher. Hooked away by Gaudino. Back in by Salako. This is Patterson trying to turn. It'll come for Houghton. Oh! Side netting. He says corner. There are a lot of people inside the ground who are shouting goal. Well, he's brought a bit of craft and guile to Crystal Palace's play already this afternoon. And he'd love to bring a goal too. I would think he's composing a bit of a roasting for his troops at half-time. Southgate. Dyer is onside, saved by the legs of Tony Coton, hooked away by Kernahan as far as Southgate, Armstrong! And Coton had to make another stop, this time with his hands. But in many ways that's been the difference between the two sides. Crystal Palace seem to have been a little bit hungry and even when it looks as if Manchester City had cleared their lines here, Crystal Palace are immediately back on the offensive. Has been much of a half for them today. Crystal Palace deservedly leading by a goal to nil at the break. Scored by Chris Armstrong. His pace allied to some direct over-the-top tactics have troubled Manchester City, but it hasn't been their only way forward because the know-how of Ray Howard has been a feature of the half too. Brian Horton's verdict on Manchester City's first half performance given with the introduction of Nicky Summerby as a substitute for Michel Vonk. It means the abandonment of the sweeper system. And Horton will hope that it will mean a bit more width and a bit more threat from his team. Here's Nicky Summerby. John Foster. Gary Fleckcroft. Alan Kernahan. Maurizio Gaudino. And they're getting chances all of a sudden. Gaudino being allowed to roam freely behind the front two. 
Uh, Brian Horton's half-time switch is starting to pay some dividends. Certainly starting to promise some dividends anyway. Somerby. Russell. Now Somerby. Eric Young did well. He's always had a turn of pace. Celebrated his 35th birthday last weekend, Eric Young, and he's been out of action for much of the season after a dispute with the manager here. And those uh, long legs get him there more often than not. Towards Brightwell this time, the header was good for Russler again. Frustration of a man who has become used to scoring goals. His ratio is better than one every other match since joining Manchester City just over a year ago. He's been an unqualified success, Uwe Rusler. Martin conceding another corner. Header away this time by Pitcher. Salako trying to relieve Crystal Palace lines, but John Foster has stolen it from Bruce Dyer. And here's Rusler, and he scored this time. He's a bit of a folk hero in Manchester already, Uwe Rösler. And his goals speak for themselves. His 30th start of the season, his 19th goal of the season, and that is a really valuable one for Manchester City. Bruce Dyer will be disappointed that Foster was allowed to steal the ball back from him, but third time lucky for Uwe Rösler, having been denied from the two corners, he buries his header into a place where Nigel Martin cannot reach. And it has been coming. Dyer. Salako. Houghton made a great run to the near post, almost came for Armstrong, will come for Southgate. There's Dyer. Some good defending there by Alan Kernahan. He was all over Bruce Dyer, blocking out the light at the near post. Salako's corner. Patterson said it. They're back in the lead. Darren Patterson's first ever goal for the club. And it couldn't have come at a better time. And within five minutes of Manchester City equalising and threatening to turn the whole match around, Alan Smith's side are back in front. Beautifully delivered corner by John Solarco, and Patterson rose between the two defenders, and Coton again watched the ball just fly past him in his near post. He didn't have a full-back protecting it, and he couldn't raise a hand to protect it either. Here's Armstrong, away by Curl, it'll be another corner. Well, it was a goal which came against the run of play. They were taking a few punches when Patterson struck. This time it's Coleman, off the line was that handball by Foster. No claims. Chris Coleman, the defender that time, who got up. Whereas Patterson gave Manchester City a problem at the near post, Coleman got up high at the far post. This is Ressler. Well, he made the chance all for himself, and he very nearly finished it all by himself. Four defenders around him, but he managed to dig out a cracking shot just wide of the mark. Manchester City were down in the bottom four themselves at the same stage of last season. They survived with a great late run, but survived by just three points. 
Crystal Palace are trying to engineer the same kind of escape themselves. Russell is in there, Walsh is in there, still Walsh! Just couldn't quite save it at the death. This firm pitch hasn't provided too many kind bounces and Paul Walsh was pirouetting there on the edge of the six-yard box just trying to find the ball. Hooked in by Cox, Armstrong's header. And that's it. And there's plenty of Premiership life left in Crystal Palace yet. A victory that will shuffle the relegation pack again. Chris Armstrong scored their first half goal. But a first ever goal for Crystal Palace for Darren Patterson decided it. Another dismal day at Selhurst Park for Manchester City. Many more like this anywhere and they'll be in big trouble. Crystal Palace head for their big cup date with Manchester United next weekend with three wins from their last four games. 2-1 the outcome today. I thought we were superb first half today. I think we all, when we look at the uh, chances we've created, we had pace, power, and we passed the ball around today. And Ray Houghton just gave us that little bit of confidence that the lads haven't got, only because they haven't played enough games in the Premier League. Got a bit of craft and guile too, hasn't he? Yes, he's, uh, he, he's a different class, lads. He's quietly effective, and I think directly he came in the changing room today. Nice atmosphere, calmed everybody down, and uh, full credit to him. I'm glad I've got him for the last nine games. Did you think twice about the move, bearing in mind Crystal Palace's league position? Not at all. When I came down and spoke to the manager and the chairman, uh, they convinced me this is the right club for me. And after looking at the players that they've got, I feel that we can stay up. Is there a danger that sides like Crystal Palace are better prepared for what lies ahead in the next few weeks than, than maybe a football inside like yourself? Well, uh, uh, somebody said that last year and that they went down and we didn't. So uh, I want to...